Hey everyone, Chris here with one more filler video to finish out Season 6 of Ancient DOS Games before we move on to Season 7. This isn't going to be too long of a video because I don't have a huge amount of stuff to talk about, mostly just what to expect for Season 7 of Ancient DOS Games, what to expect going forward in terms of shovelware diggers, and a quick update regarding where I'm at in terms of my game development efforts. However, before we get to any of that, I want to quickly address a few things which are secondary to the content I produce. Now firstly, I almost never talk about how my Patreon stuff is going, but I wanted to remind everybody that Patreon support goes a very long way in terms of helping to keep the content flowing. As for the moment, Patreon support makes up about 90% of my income, while ad revenue makes up the other 10%. I know Patreon itself has run into some bumps along the way, but I do appreciate that they actually listen to feedback when they screw up badly, which is more than can be said for some other services out there. So yeah, even if it's at the lowest tier of just a dollar a month, I really appreciate every shred of support everyone's giving me there. Now, if you're not supporting me on Patreon, another thing which goes a long way towards helping me out, which I make a point to never bring up in videos since I don't see YouTube as the end-all be-all of my content, is that the YouTube system itself is geared towards recommending content based on engagement. This means when you like a video, dislike a video, subscribe to a channel, or leave comments, you're engaging with that content, which indicates to YouTube that it should recommend that content more often. Heck, I recently noticed that according to my analytics here on YouTube, only 75% of the people who watch my videos are subscribed. Think about that for a moment. That means one out of every four of you watching this video right now who watch my videos regularly don't get any kind of notifications here on YouTube of when I release new videos, either relying on my Twitter posts, Patreon posts, or YouTube's recommendations. I kind of find that a little crazy. And the last thing I want to address for a moment are YouTube comments themselves. Now, I want to get out of the way that I make an effort to read every single comment that's posted, though it can be a little tricky sometimes, as the notification system doesn't catch everything, and looking up replies to comments can be surprisingly annoying. With all that said, I want to clarify some of the rules I go by in terms of moderating comments, so that they don't get out of hand. And the first and most important rule of all is no hate speech, threats, derogatory remarks, etc. Neither towards me or other commenters. Uh, sometimes I'll make an effort to reply if a comment doesn't seem like it was intended to be rude, but if it's blatantly obvious a comment has malice behind it, it's gone. And I want to clarify too that this only concerns me in terms of people. You want to insult a game? Go right ahead. It's a piece of software made up of ones and zeros. It has no feelings. But limit your insults to the game itself or the corporate entity it came from. Do not disparage the people who made it. Secondly, in terms of links, all links posted in comments must be relevant to the content of the video, cannot be self-promotion links, and cannot be written to circumvent the link filtering system. Now, YouTube allows you to choose how you want links to be handled, and I have it set up so that all comments with links are filtered out at first and do not appear publicly until I flag those comments as okay. Any links written in such a way as to circumvent the link filtering system will be removed no matter what, so please don't do that. Now, thirdly, if you want to be critical of something, keep it civil. A number of times I've seen someone try to pass off insults as constructive criticism, but that's not how constructive criticism works. Valid criticisms are when you explain what's wrong with something and then explain what you feel the correct thing to do would have been. If you have to be insulting to do that, then you're either not doing it right, or your criticisms are merely personal opinions, which do not carry any weight and are thus not constructive. Fourthly, don't complain about YouTube itself in the comments. It's not relevant to my videos, and I have no control over how YouTube works in general. Now, if there's a functional problem with YouTube, use their feedback system to report it. Now, if you have a problem with the age gating system for mature rated videos, that's entirely on you. I've explained more than once that it's for sake of parents and kids, and thus any future complaints about that are going to be nuked. And lastly, please don't write essays for comments. Now, I technically don't have a problem with this, but if your comment doesn't fit on my screen, I'm just going to end up speed reading it to make sure it's not derogatory, and will likely have nothing to say in response. Plus, other people are just going to skip the comment entirely when they see how long it is. If you want people to interact with your comments, you need to keep it short and concise. If you can't say what you want to say quickly, then what you should do is make your own videos and blog posts about it. 
Also, don't forget that I have an email address in the credits of every video that I post online, so if you need to tell me something directly and in private, that is always an option. Plus, I only take review requests by email so as not to lose track of them. Now then, what to expect for Season 7 of ADG? The format and scheduling is not going to change to any major degree. I'm going to continue with the bi-weekly schedule, releasing new ADG videos every two weeks on Saturdays. And I intend to only bring out pro and mod videos when I feel like making them, as opposed to on a regular basis, with fillers being posted after every five ADG videos, or when necessary due to unforeseen circumstances. However, after a lot of thought, I decided I'll be adding a week to my time away from ADG to ensure that I can get everything in place and ready to go without forcing the issue, due to how stupid things have continued to be for me in the real world. Well, you can watch one of my earlier fillers to learn just how dumb things got and continue to be in some regards. So to that end, episode 301 of Ancient DOS Games will be debuting one month from now, on Saturday, July 16th. In terms of shovelware diggers, the current plan is to keep it up until at least week 300, and then take a moment to see where things are at. As it stands, I'm still not in a spot where I can viably begin tackling Windows 9X shovelware, and presently, the massive archive we're going through on the show is starting to run slightly dry in terms of things which aren't card or board games. Now, there's still a bunch of stuff left, but I'm not certain if we can make it all the way to week 350 without the show becoming nothing but those kinds of games. However, if I bring shovelware diggers to a close in the future, I do have plans for other shows that I can put in its place, which would be quick to make and still have some level of Patreon interaction, which was the whole point of my tiers over there. As week 300 gets closer, I'll probably post a poll for Patreon supporters to decide what they'd like to see next, and then go from there. But we're still a solid number of weeks away from that event, so we're still going to be digging up plenty of shovelware for the rest of the year. And in terms of my own game development efforts, things have stalled out a bit because I've been flip-flopping between a lot of different projects, desperately trying to determine if there's anything I could make which would go quick, not exceed my own skills, and still get a decent amount of attention. As the more I work on Project LJ, the more I realize I am very underqualified to make it on my own, and even with help, it'd probably take several years to complete. But despite any of that, I have indeed been continuing to plan out my projects, so many of them are in states where if I wanted to start developing them, I could do so very quickly, I just need to make sure I'm committing myself to projects that I know I can finish, and that's been the tricky part. Well, that said, one of the primary things which stopped me from using the Goto engine for 3D game projects was a long-standing issue in regards to shader caching. Now, every iteration of Goto 3.x up to now has done what's referred to as lazy compiling of graphic shaders, which means the shaders are only compiled when they first come into use and may end up needing to be recompiled following scene transitions depending on what's loaded and unloaded. While this may not sound like anything too harmful, it is in fact extremely detrimental, as every time a shader newly compiles during gameplay, it can cause a massive lag spike, anywhere from just a frame or two to an entire second. You don't want that happening in a game you've paid hard-earned cash to play. Now yes, there are workarounds to the shader caching issues in Godot, but I had a heck of a time getting some of them to work, and some of them I just couldn't get to work, period. However, I've learned that the next iteration of the Godot engine, Godot 3.5, now feature complete and currently in testing as of my making this video, has a solution in place for asynchronous shader compilation, which should eliminate those massive stutters for good. But granted, it may introduce other issues, such as having objects appear pure white while their shaders are being compiled, but I'm hoping the new system also makes some of the tricks for pre-compiling shaders work better, or add some tricks of its own, because then the Goto engine would once again be viable for 3D game dev. Because I've been tinkering with Unreal Engine long enough now to know that, for as powerful as it is, it takes so much longer to develop things in it, because there's a million more properties and things going on automatically to deal with. Goto isn't as powerful, but it's a heck of a lot simpler to use. Anywho, that's all I've got to say for this filler, so it's time to officially end Season 6 of Ancient DOS Games. Huge thanks go out to all of you who've been watching the show and supporting my content in whichever manner suits you best, and as I've said many times, but will reiterate again, unless and until something I do sees greater success than ADG, ADG will continue to be my primary project. So to that end, stay tuned for episode 301, again debuting Saturday, July 16th, where we're going to be taking a look at one of the sequels to a 2D action puzzle game which made the jump to three dimensions.
Thanks for watching, everyone, and extra special thanks to those of you supporting me on Patreon. Here's just a small, random selection of you all.